Good morning and welcome again to our daily service. As we begin, let's read together just one verse from Isaiah chapter 50, which is speaking of the Lord Jesus, that the servant of the Lord, as Isaiah refers to him. We'll read this one verse together and then I'll lead us in a prayer. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. Lord Jesus, thank you that you know the word that sustains the weary. And thank you for every time your word has sustained us. Thank you for these opportunities, morning by morning, for us to learn from you as we listen to your word. Please now open our ears, encourage and strengthen our hearts, we pray. Amen. For Isaiah, Jesus was the one with a well-instructed tongue. He says earlier in the book, He's the one on whom the spirit of wisdom and understanding rests. In the New Testament, Paul tells us how all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge would be found in Jesus. He is the very wisdom of God. I say that because this week we're going to look at a chapter from the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 8, where wisdom is personified for us as a woman and appeals to us to listen to her, to, to, to watch daily at her doors, that we might find life. Let me now just read the first five verses of Proverbs chapter 8. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gate leading into the city, at the entrance, she cries aloud. To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all humanity. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. The voice of wisdom often seems to be drowned out in our world by the cacophony of other voices clamouring for our attention. But the picture here is not of wisdom sitting in some cordon corner, hidden away, whispering her advice to the few souls who happen to bother to want to listen. She is calling out, raising her voice, crying aloud, the writer says. Notice where she stands. Verse 2. At the highest point along the way, that is, on the hilltop, where all could see her from miles around, where the paths meet, we read, she takes her stand. That means at the, the crossroads, where everyone would pass, whatever direction they might be going in. Verse 3, beside the gate leading into the city, the city gates were where people gathered, where meetings were held, where important matters were discussed. The point seems to be that wisdom speaks not some private truth for some private sphere of our lives. This is public truth for the world out there, the world where we live our lives. Wisdom wants to speak into every area of our life, whatever we do, wherever we go. So that's where she stands. Then notice to whom she calls. Verse 4. To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all humanity. This is not just truth for the intelligent, wisdom for the bookish and learned, for those whose lives are pretty well sorted. And she calls to you who are simple, you who are foolish, those whose lives are a mess, who don't know how to live well. She calls to all of us. As we read on, we'll see 
why we should listen to wisdom. Why what she offers is uniquely precious. But that's for these coming mornings as we read on. These opening verses essentially are just telling us that wisdom's call is loud, public, universal. And so we need to pause and try and think how that is so. It doesn't seem to be the case. Wisdom's voice seems scarcely heard in our world, easily ignored in our world. So how are we to understand the truth of these verses? We might think of Paul's words in Romans chapter 1, where he writes this. Since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. He's saying in creation, wisdom's voice is heard by everyone. And not just creation, in our consciences too. For all that they are clouded by sin, we have a sense of the significance of our choices, our accountability for them. Creation conscience. But above all in Christ, the wisdom of God calls to everyone. Paul says to the Athenians, formerly God overlooked our ignorance, but in the light of Jesus' resurrection, the truth and claims of Christ call everyone everywhere to bring all of life under his rule. So today we must heed wisdom's call to do that. Let me pray. Thank you, Father, that you don't hide your wisdom from us. Especially in your Son, you have revealed it fully. May we not keep your wisdom to some separate and private compartment of our lives. But rather, as we live out our lives in the world, may we listen to wisdom's voice. Live to please and honour your Son in everything. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's pray together. Uh, or, or I'll pray one of the colleagues for this week. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. We will pray this next collect together. It's the old collect for this week, yesterday, often called Stir Up Sunday. Let's pray this together. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn now speaks of the God who alone is wise. Victorious. Th
eyes to see Tis only the splendor of light hide Let me pray. So help us, Father, to fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Remembering that our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal weight of glory that far outweighs them all. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us once again.